calling all detectives. When a sidewalk pitchman gives away free samples and their genuine diamond rings, then it's time to start asking questions. That is the situation on this page from my casebook, the casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, has to be a super salesman because all he has to peddle is his knowledge of human nature. The pitchman working on the corner of Elm and Vine Streets was doing a land office business. Here it is, folks, the most amazing, the most remarkable item you ever saw. Practically given away. This is our way of advertising. Take a look at this, folks. You say it's a cigarette lighter, and right you are. A twill, a whale, she never misses. But you haven't seen anything yet. Now watch. He blew out the flame, twisted the bottom of the metal cylinder. And now it's a ballpoint pen. Only one dollar, folks. Who'll be the first? The pitchman was doing fine business, but he didn't look happy. While he chatted away, his eyes darted from side to side, always watchful and wary. Oh, well, watching out for cops is an occupational hazard of sidewalk salesmen. No cops showed up, but about a minute later, a mousy-looking little man joined the crowd. The pitchman spotted him. This is our way of advertising. Free samples to every 50th customer. And for you, my friend, this genuine imitation diamond bracelet. From his suitcase, the pitchman pulled a flashy bracelet, tossed it to the latecomer, who grabbed it, put down a dollar, bought one of the combination lighter pens, and disappeared. About five minutes and six sales later, the pitchman repeated his giveaway stunt. This time... A 14-carat simulated almost genuine diamond ring. The man who got the ring looked vaguely familiar to me. I followed him as he edged away from the crowd. He glanced over his shoulder, saw me, and started to run. I grabbed him at the next corner. <coughs> well, well, if it isn't Hot Eyes Harry. Hand over the ring, Harry. I want to see the kind of samples pitchmen give away these days. I took the ring, examined it. It was a six-carat marquee-cut diamond in a platinum setting, worth at least $10,000. A street corner pitchman had a new angle. He gave away genuine diamond bracelets and rings with one-dollar cigarette lighters. The pitchman had disappeared. But my prisoner, Hot Eyes Harry, was perfectly willing to go to police headquarters after I put the cuffs on him. And when we questioned Harry... Do keys the pitchman glams his stuff, Steve. Th then he passes it along one piece at a time to guys like me, and uh, we peddle it in taverns, uh, take ads in the paper. Nobody suspects a pitchman. It's a perfect setup. Except I got caught. What do you meet, Duke, to give him his share of the money? In a junk, the Green Lantern on 18th Street. The Green Lantern was noisy and disreputable. A place where you can get a drink of liquor, a bang over the head, and your pockets picked all for 35 cents. The bartender was a massive 250-pounder who could have made a better living as a Hollywood villain. Listen, bub, this is the fourth time you come nosing in here. But what are you looking besides a smack in the teeth? Who around here is big enough to do it? The bartender put his hands in his apron pocket. Bub, I'm a peaceful man. I don't like trouble. It makes me sad. He took his hands out of his pocket. There was a bung starter clenched in his right fist. I ducked the wrong way. <laughs> when I came to, I was sprawled in the gutter. Outside the Green Lantern. I staggered to my feet, wobbled down the block. Oh, well, I've, I've lost many a first round. I fumbled through my pockets. Sure enough, the $20 I'd had there was gone. But somebody had thoughtfully put in a dime for car fare. I went on back to my office got my wallet and credentials out of the desk drawer where I'd left them. There was also a revolver and blackjack in the drawer. I looked at them thoughtfully. Finally decided this was a blackjack-type job, took that and left the revolver. Oh. 
fat boy, the bartender, spotted me as soon as I came into the joint again. Well, well, Punchy is back for more. Come here, sweetheart, let me slug you again. The bartender came around the bar as I approached. He turned for a moment to his silent customers. He loves this. I didn't say anything. I just swung the blackjack and cracked him lightly across the bridge of his nose. He let out a bellow and went down to his knees. I swung the blackjack again. <laughs> they crashed forward like a pole-axed steer. I glanced around. Show's over, folks. The bar's closed. Everybody out. About ten minutes later, the bartender struggled to his knees. I'll, I'll kill you for this. Sure you will, but not now. When he came to the second time, I dragged him off the floor, flung him into a chair. What are you going to do to me? I grinned at him. I'm going to beat your fat head in, an inch at a time. I dangled the blackjack from my fingers. Where's Duke? The bartender leered at me. You'll never know. Okay. I got time. I swung the blackjack in a wide arc, but before it landed... Wait! He, he's hiding out. Uh, 67 Forest Street, third floor. Uh, don't hit me again. You mean you don't love it? Come on, let's go for a ride. I picked up a street corner cop, turned Fat Boy over to him, then went on to the Forest Street address. The place was a ratty tenement. I went on up to the third floor. There was only one door. I flattened myself against the wall, reached my hand around... The bullets ripped through the doors. They would have ripped through me if I was standing in front of it. A second later, the pitchman dashed out. Once more, I swung the blackjack. And after that, everything was nice and peaceful again. Yep, fat boy, the bartender, had stalled me long enough for somebody to get word to Duke that I was coming. Then he gave me the address that was supposed to be a death trap. Except that I know a few things about human nature, too. As much, say, as a bartender with murder in his heart. Well, that broke up the jewel gang. I got a fine reward out of the deal. Not bad for a night's work. Like I said, no matter how tough a proposition may seem, you can generally work it out, if you've got the right pitch. Listen next time to Calling All Detectives, Mystery Drama, Mystery Quiz, and a chance for you to match wits with yours truly, Jerry Browning, Private Detective. 